For nearly two decades, the Kardashian-Jenner family has had a pervasive place in pop culture. Members of the Kar-Jenner clan have championed progress and innovation with successful brands that span across fashion, beauty, and technology, while each has also played a part in more distasteful or lazy projects, such as crypto scams and movies by Tyler Perry, a filmmaker who has been writing screenplays using artificial intelligence since before computers were invented. But despite the all-encompassing commercial success of Kim, Chloe, Courtney, Kylie, Kendall, Chris, and sometimes Caitlyn, there is still one industry that this family has not been able to fully infiltrate despite their extreme wealth and powerful connections. Selling human meat on the black market. Oh, nope, I just got a tip that that's actually how they make a profit with their post-surgery offcuts. What a very conscientious people. They use every single part of the ass tissue. Okay, fine, but there's still the music industry, where not one Jenner or Kardashian has been able to achieve significant proximity outside of marrying Kanye West or making Beyonce hate them. But that's not for a lack of trying. So today, let's listen in on the several attempts at sonic stardom that this famous family has left in its wake. With dated dance jams, wretched rap features, and unfathomably bad silly family projects. Turn down the volume on your earbuds and maybe bite down on a leather belt, cause it's gonna get painful. On this out of tune and spelled with a capital K installment of Clip Breakdown. Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web. And we break it down like the dance break in a song about dancing about a break dance. So that we can look at each individual line and note and quarter note and rest measure and decide if it's worthy of a Grammy or if it's getting a Razzie, but for movies that are music. I'm getting over a cold. Can we not hold me to a high standard of flow? I'm not Kim Kardashian rapping to the bump up the jam song that we're about to hear because mama, if you've ever witnessed any of the Kardashian Jenners try to be musicians, it's been painful to watch. Even when they're just joking, I'm like, I'm not joking. It sucks. <laughs> I think it has something to do with like, if you're gonna be singing or like do a song or whatever, the more sheepish and embarrassed you seem about it, the more hard it is for the audience to watch. If it looks painful for you to perform, then it's painful. Like, just have some confidence. A little bit of stage presence would go a long way here, sis. But I mean, come to think of it, the Kardashian-Jenner sisters, they really do not have a lot of stage presence in general. They might be sometimes entertaining when they're on camera in a familiar home environment, which is what we see all the time on reality TV. But think of like Kendall Jenner trying to present the award at that, I don't know, the, it was a big award show, MTV maybe, but she was like, oh, guys, I'm the worst reader. It's like, who are you talking to? Read the prompter. How how are you the worst reader? Did you not graduate high school? Whatever. Kendall is the first one I'm coming for in this video, but before we do, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That lets me know that you want to see even more Kardashian crammed into your throats. Also, most importantly, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss new videos from me. If you're watching this right now, I'm in the UK. Nicki Minaj, I'm in the UK, but just for one day. Except I'm there for 14 or so days. So I'm uploading this from abroad using another country internet. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon, so check those out if you care to. So I'll be honest, this first clip is not like it's the Kardashians trying in an earnest attempt to break out into the music scene, but it still hurts my soul to watch. This was back in 2016, Kendall Jenner with the creative director of Balmain, Olivier Roustain, doing some karaoke to one of the hottest songs of that year. Kendall is obviously not the best person to bring to a karaoke bar with you unless you like carrying the whole song on your own, which I do. So come along, Kendall. You're not gonna wanna hang out with me though. After a few of the things that I say about you here today, but let's watch the clip. Uh, we found love by Rihanna. Love is the way I'm feeling. I just can't deny. But I gotta let go. We found love in a place. Come on. It's too hard to I'm not gonna say. 
Just sing the song, Kendall. We'll be the judge of whether it's too high pitched for you or you're not good at this. It is and you're not. I guess it was just important to me that I be the one to say it since this is my mean spirited YouTube video. Speaking of which, was there ever a period of time when terrible celebrity karaoke was the type of content people were seeking out on YouTube? Or in 2016, was the name of the game just to corner anyone from the Kardashian family and watch them flounder when asked to do something personality driven? Cause I'm, I'm still kind of here for that. In any case, Kendall, it's time for you to get yourself out of this clearly uncomfortable musical moment. That means even more uncomfortable dancing. Quick, Kendall, initiate Ashley Simpson mode. Quick, someone get that supermodel a blood test. I'm worried she might be over the normal limit of athleticness. Every blood test I've ever done has said that I am like over the normal limit of athleticness. No, sweetie, they said you have higher than average triglycerides. Did your doctor not explain that word is not a measurement of how ready you are for triathlons and bike rides? Like, you're supposed to be starting a new medication by now. Okay, but fine, but Kendall is not like other girls, so clearly she is an exception to the musical genes that the rest of the family must carry. Let's move up the family food chain slash tree, I guess. Do Kardashians grow on trees? No, they come out of the ground like root vegetables. Regardless, let's move on up the ladder to Kylie, the richest of them all, from what I can tell. I mean, it's hard to know because they all lie about their net worth. Either way, I remember very specifically when this song came out online, the lip kits had yet to come out. This was May of 2016 when she was featured on a song by Burberry Perry with Lil Yachty, who I loved it that year. I was like, I ain't been getting Hi, well, maybe a little baby. I don't want to lie. Notice when you text me, girl, I don't always reply. But you're not an angel either. You can't even fly. I liked that song. I listened to it on my way to my terrible job in Simi Valley. F you, you. I'm gonna bleep that out because I, you never know. I might be crawling back there for a job when the algorithm turns against me. Just kidding, knock on wood. Anyway, Jenner was featured on the song along with Lil Yachty and her former friend slash now friends again, Jordan Woods on a song called Beautiful Day. And I'm like, was this a real song that was released by a record label? Because it's painful. Anyway, we'll jump right ahead to when Kylie and Jordan jump on the track. Let's be Jordan. serious about this. Come on, we're gonna be serious hey, about this. Hey, yeah, yeah. Jordy. Jordan. I've Jordan, never, come on. I've never been on a song before. This is a f***ing... Well, sorry doesn't take away from the fact that you were just on a song that sounds like the trap version of my mom putting away dishes while the rest of the house is asleep. Maybe I'm just not familiar with Burberry Perry's style of music, but to me, that sounded like three different songs with very different tempos being layered together. And one of them was like a haunted house soundtrack from Spirit Halloween. Again, it was mainly Jordan and Kylie giggling through the thing. I, I think that was mostly just like them messing around and they posted it because they knew if it featured Kylie Jenner, it was gonna get viral. And here we are talking about it eight years later, so good on ya. That being said, Kylie Jenner does seem to have the strongest musical ability. She said she's worked with a vocal coach. I can never tell if she's being sarcastic or not because I don't care enough to read into her social cues that deeply. It's like, if you're gonna be so cool that I can't tell if you're joking or not, that's no longer cool to me. I wanna know that you're joking so that I can laugh in your face and know if that's ironic or not. Regardless, we'll hear more of Kylie singing in earnest later on. You already know what her singing voice sounds like because she was like, rise and shine. It's like, that was really how she sings. She talks really soft-spoken like this, chicken tacos. And so that's how her singing is too. Like we're not getting in Aretha Franklin here. By the way, when I was growing up, there was only one kind of celebrity product and that was perfume, which is why Paris Hilton has three dozen of them. I wasn't a fan of every one of those, but I do love fragrances in general, especially like this past month, I had to have my car go to the auto body shop and I don't know if my mechanic was perhaps some type of large breed dog with a bacterial infection, but it did not smell right. My car did not smell right when it came back, which is why I'm so lucky that I was already aware of Drift, which is the sponsor.
sponsor of today's video. They are a sister company to Scentbird, who I already love because they show me all of these great new fragrances every month. Drift brings the same experience to your car and your home using these really innovative air care products that really improve my quality of life. If you're used to using regular car fresheners, then you know that they are not really well fragranced, kind of strong and cloying. And also many times they have plastics and harmful ingredients. Drift uses only sustainable materials and all of their fragrances are created using natural fragrances and essential oils. And at only nine to $15, it's very affordable. I use this Drift, which is just a piece of beautiful looking wood that uses magnets to clip onto the visor. There's like this metal clamp that comes with it and it just looks really clean and minimalistic with a fragrance that is also very clean and not at all headache inducing like those other fragrances that I've used in the past to try to get the dog smell out of my car. Also, I've never been one to replenish a car freshener that I get at the gas station every time it runs out of fragrance. So I'm often just sitting there with some useless tree shaped thing hanging from the mirror, but Drift works on a subscription. So as they recommend, and every 30 days I get a new drift refill and you can even enroll in their scent of the month club and try a new seasonal scent every single time they ship one out to you, which is great if you experience nose blindness, which is when you get so used to a fragrance that you don't even kind of know that it's there anymore. I love being able to switch out to a new fragrance every month or just stick with my favorite like this one, Teak, with notes of musk and amber and pepper, as well as cedar, which I grew up with my dad being a woodworker and the smell of cedar just like brings me back to childhood. And it's a very flexible subscription. You can swap out scents, you can pause, cancel, or change your delivery frequency at any time. I'm telling you, every time you get into your car and experience the elevated fragrance of Drift, you're gonna thank yourself. So make sure to use my code NICK35 to get 35% off your first month at drift.co. That's less than $6 for your first month. So let me know what fragrance you end up trying in the comments below. But enough of that. We're going back in time to, I think it was, 2011, Kim Kardashian recorded a full-on dance song called Jam, parentheses, Turn It Up. It was produced by The Dream, who has had lots of hits in his career, but I guess not even a talented producer can make Kim Kardashian sound good because, <gasps> mama. Even Kim regrets doing this whole thing. Relatable queen. Haven't you ever been inside of a tiny room wearing a wet bathing suit, slowly crawling into a fan blade and it was making you horny? It's almost like this music video was predicting the future for the victims of human sacrifice at Grimace's birthday party. I cannot tell you how annoyed I am listening to Kim Kardashian's vocals here. It's not that they're off tune, it's just that she has no confidence in the delivery. And I mean, they probably pitch corrected also, but still. Feeling great, just got <laughs> and, and, and they play in my jam. Mama, this is art. I love how the visuals match the song so well. For example, Kim keeps singing the word jam, which is why the music video's color correction is giving Smucker's Conquered Grape. Then there are these random shots of her looking really oily and tan at a photo shoot. It's like, okay, peanut butter jelly time at the club tonight. A lot of people have this advice when songwriting. It's like, don't make your lyrics sound like something that would be unnatural for you to say in real life. Like Kim Kardashian would never be like, they play in my jam. I'ma get so high tonight. Like Kim Kardashian doesn't say they play in or I'ma get. Like to me, that's just like basically digital blackface. You know, it's like musical blackface. If you're trying to sound more urban or use AAVE terminology in your lyrics when that's not how you speak in real life, it's never gonna come off right. So that's just only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to any of the Kardashian Jenners appropriating another race to be cool or try to profit and make money from popular culture. But side note, although they struggle with music, did you know that between the Kardashians and Jenners, they have like several books published. Kim, Chloe, and Courtney all co-wrote a novel. And then Kendall and Kylie wrote like a, a series of young adult dystopian novels to like cash in on the, the Hunger Games type of thing. But it kind of only seems like Kendall is the only one who read the book that she wrote. Meanwhile, there are politicians and others who have spent all summer trying to ban real important books from school libraries all across the country. Right now, requests to ban 
ban books is the highest it's been in 21 years. Books like To Kill a Mockingbird or books about Martin Luther King Jr. or Anne Frank. Why would we restrict students access to that important history? Florida is even going to be required to teach students that some black people benefited from enslavement because they learned skills that they could put to use themselves. It's like, that is so insulting. A, a great way to whitewash and glorify a horrible part of our history. And they're not gonna stop there. Floridians are trying to make it so that the whole country has to teach kids this way and also restrict any lessons to exclude anything that talks about race or gender, which like, how are you gonna talk about American history without discussing race or gender to incredible inequalities that are still huge fixtures of our society today? Kids need really accurate information obviously taught to them in school so that they can keep up with the 21st century. Like to imagine going out into a global workforce, being part of a global economy and not realizing that your country was based on a bloody history of colonialism and racism. We need to leave politics out of what is being taught in history books and just focus on facts. That's the only way to prevent history from repeating itself. But anyway, feel free to check out this poorly written novel about a dystopian heroine Katniss Girly Bean written by Kendall and Kylie Jenner supposedly, regardless. As I said, there's a lot of shots of her at a photo shoot here, which is like, that's not what the song is about. You're at a club, but she's like, I'm getting a shot here and a shot here. And Terry Richardson is taking a picture with me. It's like, now you've really lost the boat, sis. Like, not Terry Richardson, sexual assault. They in my butt. <laughs> You know, there is even like some speculation that Kylie, who I just said was one of the better singers out of the whole group, was secretly the lead singer to this like kind of, I guess you would call it, I don't know, EDM group, like a, a music group called Terror Junior. Because for one of her lip glosses, she made this little short film where the song Three Strikes was playing from Terror Junior. And so somebody looked it up and found that the composers, authors, and publishers registration for the song included Kylie Jenner as one of the composers. And authors of the song. And the voices, the vocals on it are very pitched up, pitched down. So you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell right off the bat if it's Kylie Jenner or not. And a lot of people are just like, oh my God, Kylie Jenner is secretly the lead singer of Terror Jr. However, she got on Snapchat and was like, I love their music. But for those of us wondering, it's like, I'm not part of whatever their name is. And it's like, she was almost being too dismissive. Like she didn't know the name of the band when it's like, you pick them for the final cut of your lip gloss announcement. She said, I don't know if the band is trying to get a little tension or what, but it's not me. And it's like, you gave them attention by putting them on your song. That being said, I kind of don't think it was her. I think like she somehow got writing credit on the song. Maybe she knows these people, but like, I think the whole thing was just a scam to get publicity for the lip gloss drop from like a more legitimate music scene. I would check out one of my favorite creator, Naomi Cannibal's video on this. She is an icon, I'm obsessed. And she did a whole video called like, was this all a stunt? I'm guessing it was. Regardless, it only lends more credibility to that conspiracy theory that Kylie Jenner is the most most prominent voice mixed into this song called I Love My Friends, which the Kardashian Jenner girls made for Kris Jenner, their matriarch, as like a spoof on a video she made in the 80s or 90s, which was a parody or a cover of I Love LA that Kris Jenner rewrote and filmed on like very dated looking cameras for her 30th birthday. So now that it was her 60th birthday, the girls recreated the video of this Randy Newman song and they had a bunch of famous people kind of cameo in it like Katy Perry and Justin Bieber kind of like saying what they love about Kris Jenner. That was such a long explanation. Let's watch it. November 5th and now she's 60 Riding down the highway with her friends at her side Her life without them wouldn't be complete They are her joy and pride Oh no, not the bass notes. You're in a professional recording studio, ladies. No one thought to request a key change? Probably because they are all so focused on the sibling rivalry of who could make the most oversized sweatshirt into their entire outfit. Ariana Grande wore it better. Also, why does this sound like a song from Kids Bop? Except all of the kids are adults who don't realize they have depression because they were never told those feelings are valid even though they grew up wealthy. It actually makes more sense. Girls, look at your parents. Anyway, towards the end, it's not only celebrities singing Chris's praises. It's also the service workers at Craig's or, you know, the Beverly Hills Hotel who hopefully Kris Jenner tips very well every time she's there and that's why they love her so much. She loves you. She loves you. She loves you. She loves you. She loves her friends. I love my friends. <laughs> 
There you go. She loves us. <laughs> Why did Caitlyn Jenner have to come in and ruin this? It was already bad. She said, I'm gonna mess up these words and then I'm gonna slide these bubbles out of the way to reveal my kneecaps. Like, no mama, please. This was such short notice. We didn't have time to book the leather craftsman who stapled your skin back for the Vanity Fair cover shoot. Laughing like the witch of the wood. Oh, ha, ha, Malibu. Sweetheart, no. You get out of that bathtub and into the shower. Wash off the Republican if you can. Jump into the ocean. I'm talking a lot. The point is, we're now gonna jump forward to present day because if you don't know, keeping up with the Kardashians is over. But the Kardashians are still clinging to cultural relevancy with their Hulu show, The Kardashians, which is far less interesting because A, the Kardashian-Jenner family has full story approval as executive producers on the show, and B, because people just don't care so much anymore. It's like, I'm just watching a show about the rich being rich and all the problems that come along with being rich. Whereas I think the show started, it was like this family trying to gain notoriety in Hollywood or trying to achieve fame in a Hollywood system that didn't yet respect them. And now it's like people just bow down to them because they have money to pay for it. Regardless, the Kardashian Jenners in season three of episode eight, they are creating a Christmas album for charity. And Courtney's then fiance, now husband, Travis Barker is helping produce it all. And these women are just so impossible to work. I would be like, forget it. Christmas is canceled. Christmas with the cranks, especially Chloe. She's like, they're all terrified to sing. Oh, and also they do vocal lessons. And Kim, at first, she's like not even gonna sing at the vocal lessons. And she calls producer Babyface and is like, I think it'd be so great if I do Santa Baby. And that means like we practice it and you produce it off site, like secretly and like add the background vocals. And then I surprise them with how good it sounds. And everyone's like, okay. Meanwhile, Chris hired Babyface already. So nothing happens. You hired one producer. Very contrived storyline. Santa Baby also makes sense since this was Kim Kardashian back around the time that she wore the Marilyn Monroe dress to the Met Gala and basically thought she introduced the world to Marilyn Monroe that year. But she she works on it outside of the family and then she brings it after Chris sings her little ditty. I'm a farmer gray. It'll be the perfect ending of a perfect day. I remember yes, when you No laughing, guys. Santa baby, Santa. just slip a sable oh, under Santa. the tree. Yes, Kendall. While Kim may be in her just learned about Marilyn Monroe era, she's also going to law school, if you remember. So she can't help the fact that she's also in her studious, well-educated Billy Madison era as well. She's got the history books out. So while for you, it might be Christmas, for Kim, it's Christopher Columbus. You love New Year's parties and Kim worships the Nina, the Pinta and the Santa Maria, hence Santa Baby, okay? Yes, Santa Baby. Santa Baby. I sing like her too. Santa Baby, I want a yacht and really that's not a lot. I shot my pants at the farm. <laughs> What? Meanwhile, Kris Jenner is over 60, so she's like, plush velvet sometimes, sometimes just pretzels and beer, but I'm here. And everyone's like, okay, Elaine Stritch, you better crow like a prehistoric bird, you aged crooner. I'm just saying, it's a double standard. If women of a certain age are allowed to have singing voices that are rickety crickety, like a rusty hinge, then I should be allowed to laugh at how bad it sounds at church without my Nana yelling at me. <sighs> Anyway, which of your dead relatives yell at you in places of worship? Comment down below. Basically, everyone weasels out of this. Like, Chloe's like, I'm barely singing it. And then Kendall is like, I'm leaving. And Kylie's like, I don't do this kind of thing. I love when everything is so imperative for the whole family to be involved. And then Kylie's like, I can't because I'm too cool. And everyone's like, okay, sweetheart. Um, When's our next paycheck coming? Like, we get it. She controls everything because of that failing makeup brand that she overvalued to the magazines. Wow, I know a lot about this family. Anyway, I don't know how the final result sounds of this Christmas album, so let's hear after all of the bells and whistles have been put on it in the studio by Travis. Listen to that. Domo arigato, Chris, Miss Roboto. Those rendered out to be some real smooth vocals, fam. Like the dial tone on my landline. If I didn't know that was an auto-tuned version of Chris Jenner singing, I would be like, ah, I didn't think it was possible, but they did it. Chat GBT has finally learned the meaning of Christmas. Farmer Gray. It'll be the perfect ending of a perfect 
day. But anyway, that's all we have in the musical lexicon of the Kardashian-Jenner family. Hopefully, are there any other songs or musical ventures that I missed from these guys? Let me know in the comments below. But also, give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more Kardashian-Jenner videos from me. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I have new ones every week. Thanks again to Drift for sponsoring. Don't forget to check out their links below. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon. That way you can access exclusive bonus content and virtual watch parties where we watch movies live. You're not going to want to miss it. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for loving my friends with me today. I will see you next time.